Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So this will be fun today. I'm going to do an oracle, four cards. So four cards out there, oracle, yes, no answers. So you can pick one, two, three, or four. You know, you can stop the tape when you're in there and uh, get a yes, no answer. And then if you want more information right after that, I'm going to turn them back over and do a dyadic cross, so a full six card uh, divination on each uh, one, two, three, four pick. So oracle, four card, you pick and see what happens. So this is the Chinese tarot deck by, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wei Gulang. Perhaps you can see it there and make your own determination as to how to pronounce it. But this is by U.S. Games Systems. And uh, I've had these cards for a bit, and I've been uh, playing with them. And so I thought I'd just um, show you uh, what we've got here. So they come in just a typical, uh, you know, little box. It's not anything to speak of, really. And um, the um, the inserts in here are, again, what you typically find with cards. And the, the deck, the uh, instruction pamphlet, is just uh, a typical little uh, instruction pamphlet with the typical uh, suggestions in one language as to how to join the cards. So, there. And, um, but the cards themselves are pretty cool. I've enjoyed using them, and they're not hard to uh, interpret. Now, this is a really neat design on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a warrior here with their hands outstretched, and then all this going on, and another warrior upside down here. So that's the back, but then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're good size, and uh, the art is interesting, and they're very easy to read, uh, even though they don't have the typical little uh, signals that uh, a lot of cards give you as to what this means and what that means, and you know, you know what I mean? So there we go. So this is the uh, the Chinese tarot deck. And, you know, I like to spread them out in this for two reasons. One, if you're working with somebody, you can let them uh, kind of spread them out this way if they're not com comfortable with shuffling and you really want them to get involved with all the cards. And two, um, you know, when I was just uh, looking at uh, readers online, I always wondered, what does the rest of the deck look like besides what I got to see in just the short little presentation? So this is the Chinese tarot deck, and I like them. So this will be interesting. I have this new deck, and I've actually had them on my desk for a while, and I've been using them probably a week or maybe two weeks. I've been using them, uh, you know, when I watch television or just put sitting around the house, not doing anything important, and uh, just to get used to them. And I like them a lot. They're not hard to uh, to figure out. So I thought, uh, why not use them uh, for this? So this will be the Oracle four card you pick. So let's try to see if these cards can uh, zero in. For those of you watching right now. Um, what four cards are going to come out for a yes, no answer. So think right now, the best thing you can do is just clear your mind. First of all, take a deep breath. And then uh, think of what it is you want the cards to address. You can pick one, two, three, or four, or several of them. And uh, we'll see uh, what uh, comes up for you. So this is going to be one, two, three, and four. And then when we're finished, I'll do a full uh, dyadic cross on each one. So one, two, three, four. Pick your card. One, two, three, four. Remember, you can stop the tape. One, two, three, four. Think of what it is that you want to answer for. One, two, three, four. And this is the last count. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to put these up over here for now. And uh, let's take this and let it work on some energy. And so if you chose number one, the signifier for that is the Wheel of Fortune. This is a big yes card, and I love the illustration on this card. I mean, look at that Wheel of Fortune. It's, it's, uh, this uh, deck is all seems to have a very pleasant uh, theme uh, running through it. Uh, you know, the tiger is imposing, the dragon is, but nothing is just really uh, drastic and 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 unnice, if that were a word. So if you chose number one, Wheel of Fortune, uh, there's some luck involved in that, but it is a yes card. Now, if you chose the second card, now that's uh, the Eight of Swords. And the Eight of Swords is, you know, really uh, embattled and feeling like, uh, you know, there's something uh, stuck, there's something fearful, there's chaos involved. And um, so that Eight of Swords is, I'm going to say that's a no card. Um, so we've got a no card in the second one. 
Now, if you chose the third card, then in this one, we have the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Staves. And for me, this is a yes card because uh, Wands, Staves, are action, motion, power, forward, uh, going, planning. And so this is a big Ace of Staves. And so this is a big yes. And uh, there's got to be some planning involved here. And then the last card, you chose number four. It's going to be the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups is typically kind of something that you don't really want. It's how I interpret it. It's not how everybody interprets it, though. And uh, this fella, however, in this uh, uh, Four of Cups, has kind of chosen one of these cups. And you could take it as that he's a little hesitant to drink it. Um, so I'm going to say this is a no card. Okay, so we've got a no card in that one. So we've got uh, a yes, we've got a no, we've got a yes, and we've got a no. So we're going to turn these over and now do some further investigation into this Wheel of Fortune, if that's the card that you chose. Wheel of Fortune, if that's the card that you chose. Let's see what uh, is in the works for you today. Sometimes I get interrupted by a message that I have to answer, and that's what happened right there. I got a text message I had to deal with. So Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune, what's going on for you today? The signifier is the Wheel of Fortune. We're gonna get five more cards out of here to help figure out uh, the rest of this answer for you. So we got one, two, three, four, and right there, five. Okay, the Wheel of Fortune, that's a yes card, but uh, let's see uh, what more we can figure out for you. Now, the signifier, Wheel of Fortune, the challenge to that for today is the Knight of Coins, you know, and I always like to say the Knight is the is an like the action figure of the royal cards. You got the Page, the Knight, the Queen, and the King, and the Knight is a guy who you can say, "Listen, I want you to go out and get this done for me," and he's going to do it. And this Knight is bringing forth uh, uh, the coins, which is value, uh, could even be monetary value. So this Wheel of Fortune right here as a signifier is challenged by the action of this Knight and his value. So the Wheel of Fortune challenged by movement forward. On some sort of value. The um, base of this reading then is the magician. And I love the way the magician is depicted in this card. Look at this guy. He is totally in control of us. He's got us in complete um, you know, awe of what he's able to manifest right here. He has all the tools that are required. Uh, I see if I can pick him out. This is the, uh, the uh, sword, of course, the cup, uh, the value, uh, the coin, and um, I don't, and the wands, I'm not sure uh, where they are in this picture, but he's the guy who can make anything happen. And that's at the base of your reading. So having the uh, magician at the base of your reading really uh, makes, means that you come into this somewhat empowered uh, the, the, uh, with, with lots of, of choices, lots of things that you can do. And look there. So now as I look at it more, we've got the wand right here, and then the coins, I guess, can be represented by all these dots on the page like that. The, um, the past of this reading, then, is the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups is, you notice that we've got a couple of, of the cups that are spilled over, three of them as a matter of fact. We've got a couple that are still upright and dripping on the floor. And I always like to say this is the card of, you know, crying over spilt milk. So let's don't look at what we've lost. But let's look at what we still have to, to move us forward. He could be, he could have set that cup down. He could have been crying over what's happening here. But no, he said, let me go forward and make this happen. So in the past of your reading here, whatever has happened, uh, is is over and done. So now we need to move forward and see what our fortune is going to be. And then in the sky of this reading is the four of coins, and the four of coins is holding on to your worth. And this guy is doing an amazing job of just that. He's got all of his worth really well uh, assembled here, and he seems very happy and moving forward with his with his value. And sometimes that's what we have to hope for is to keep keep a uh, keep a hold of what's important to us. And then the final outcome of this then is going to be the Ten of Swords. Unfortunately, the Ten of Swords is just a full stop, the end of a cycle. So what you've got right here is the Wheel of Fortune, which is spinning you off on something starting. But the likely outcome of this is that uh, this is going to be the, you're at likely the end of this cycle and something new is about to begin. So the Wheel of Fortune, your good luck is being challenged by the Knight of Coins, someone coming at you with a lot of value and determination. You came into this with everything that you needed. There may have been some disappointment, but you have to move on. And if you do move on, you're going to hold on to your value and trot forward right to the end and then get ready for a new start. That's what I've got for this. <coughs> I've got a, a little scratch in my throat today. And it happens anytime you have to talk, or when I have to talk, 
I guess because I sit here quiet a lot, then all of a sudden my voice is saying, what do you mean? What do you mean we're talking? So yeah, I got interrupted in the middle of that and had to take a call. But here I am back and let's see what we've got. So if you chose number two, the signifier for that is the Eight of Swords. That's a no card, I'm sorry to say. Um, and it's feeling trapped, you know, as if you can't make a move. But we all know that you can. So let's, let's see what comes with this no card, this Eight of Swords. And, you know, like I try to remind folks, you know, I have to interpret the cards the way they make sense to me. So another reader may uh, have a different interpretation. You may have a different interpretation, and you have to be true to yourself. If what I'm saying doesn't ring true to you, but you see it answering the cards, shoot, go with that. All right, so we're going to need five cards out of here. One, two, look at this card flipped over. I didn't turn them over well. Three, four. And five, and let me just put that card back over so that it doesn't cause grief when I go to do something else here in a minute. Yeah, there are all the rest of them. Okay. Signifier, the Eight of Swords, and let's find out what is the challenge to this uh, restriction. And that is going to be the Nine of Swords. Well, you know, that's where we're at. We're embattled. It's nightmarish. It's just a lot, a lot coming at you. Um, uh, rules could be uh, injustices to you could be some regulations that you need to work with but uh, this is not going to be an easy road so far let's see what's the base of the reading so for the base of this reading we have the page of cups and the page i always like to say he's the lesser of the four court cards the page of knight and queen the king so he's bringing an issue to the court he's bringing this emotional uh, event uh, for the court to consider and some people like to say well the page is not very um, uh, strong but no he doesn't need to be you can consider his he's bringing you a sealed envelope that he doesn't even know what's inside uh, he's just bringing it to you for consideration so this is the page of cups this is an emotional consideration uh, that all of this started out with and it makes sense if, it, if it's this restricted in the past of this reading we've got the seven of wands the seven of staves and this is good news because this tells us that we had lots of issues the seven of, of staves is is going through some stuff but he's got a handle on it and he's going to work through them one at a time so that's how we came to this and then the sky of this reading is the high priestess and the high priestess is a perfect the perfect uh card to have in, in a situation where you've got a little bit of a negative energy going on because she gives you all the intuition all the knowledge all the um everything you need to know that what you're doing is is the right move so let's put this high priestess right here and uh, and see what is the final outcome if you chose number two which was a no card the six of cups and the six of cups is um that's not the illusion and delusion is it I always uh, uh, want to mistake the six of cups that's remembering that things when things were a better time how they were in the past it could be uh inheritance it can be some sort of a family uh situation or or a reminiscing so so let's put it together again so we've got uh, the eight of swords here which is telling us you know i'm bound up i'm locked up and i can't do uh, anything with this and it's caused me this nightmare situation the good news is that we came into it with a, a message of some emotional value that was what had to be dealt with and we in the seven of staves we started ticking off those emotions we started ticking off those issues those plans and taking care of them and you have to know that you have to trust yourself in this high priestess trust your intuition you do have the knowledge and and what you need to get through this and um, then with the six of cups is that uh, we can get back to a happy place we can get back to a happy place but it's a no right now it's a no right now and with lots of workings and consideration you can bring it back to an even keel okay I guess I can leave those up. So for the last, not the last, but the next card in this, which is going to be number three, if that's what you chose, this is the Ace of Wands. So the Ace of Wands for today. The Ace is a great big offer of a plan of uh, movement forward. And, uh, and that's what you like. That's what we want to have. We want to have movement forward in our lives. We don't want to be stagnant. And when the Ace brings us, um, you know, this consideration, then we know then it's in our best interest to go ahead and, and, and move in that direction. Okay, so we're going to take these cards and find five to accompany this number three, this Ace of Staves. Five cards there. Let's scoop these back up, put them over here to work on that last card. And so if you chose one, two, three, four, five, if you chose the Ace of Wands, and here's what's going to be the challenge to this 
offer of, of, of a big play of moving forward. The challenge to that is the Queen of Coins. And the Queen of Coins is all-knowing. She's in full charge of all of her value. She knows and she's confident in what has to be accomplished. And she's ready to, you know, make a decision about what's going on forward here. So this is a big, uh, this is more or less backup to this plan. Yes, we have to move forward. And, and the challenge to it um, is this uh, Queen of Coin. But really, she's the one who's going to say, okay, let's do it. The challenge may be your hesitancy in moving forward. The um, base of this reading then is the Two of Swords. And the same thing. So making a direction, picking a way. Which way are we going to go? Am I going to stab you with this one? The truth, I'm going to stab you with that one. Justice. You know, we've got to move forward. We've got to be deft about it. We've got to be, uh, you know, really uh, on point, so to speak. So that Two of Swords, uh, we came into this knowing that we had to make a decision. In the past of this reading is the Chariot. And things coming along at a rapid pace. You know, this guy is flying through the sky and uh, really um, not wasting any time. So this issue, it seems to me like, came up. Uh, really rapidly. And then the sky of this reading is the Queen of Cups. Love it when I get these queens because they are such strong feminine power. And when her being the Queen of Cups is an emotional, passionate, uh, understanding queen. So that's what we want to shoot for. We want to be um, as, as compassionate, as understanding of the issue as we can. And then the likely outcome for all of this is the Six of Swords. And the Six of Swords is, you know, moving out of troubled water, seeking refuge, uh, kind of knowing that you're going to be moving this way and the danger is that way. So, so yeah, I would say that we're going to move forward. Uh, you have the value to do it. Um, you, you knew you had to make a decision, although it came on quickly, and you have the um, what you need to do it. So, yep, I got that call. Had to take it. So sorry. But that's where we're at with this one. There's always... Away, there's always hope. Then the last card is going to be the Four of Cups. And let's integrate these back into the pack and see what the final divination is going to be for this Four of Cups. Four of Cups is kind of something you didn't really want, but this fellow looks pretty content to go ahead and have a sip out of that cup. And let's see what this will mean for you if you chose the Four of Cups. I'm going to put these out right over here. And, uh, and get uh, some cards out of there for us. One, two, three, four, and then five. Okay. Don't need those anymore. Four cups, again, is that kind of an offer that you didn't want to take, you're a little hesitant about. This fellow, though, looks pretty pleased to take a sip of that cup, although a little hesitant. The challenge to that is going to be the Empress. You know, the Empress is um, uh, all-knowing. She's almost like Mother Nature to me, is how I think of the Empress. And uh, so she's a very strong card. And if I was looking for a big uh, yes card, the Empress card is the one I'd want to have. So this uh, hesitancy is challenged by, a, you know, an, a, an urging that, yes, we can do this. And then the basis of this reading is going to be the Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is a broken heart. So I hope that whatever brought us to this decision a point uh, isn't something that was uh, caused you to have a broken heart. But it is disappointment. Uh, the past of this reading is the uh, Hanged Man. It's called the Hanging Ghost in this card. And let's see if I can pick him out. Yeah, look, is there actually a, a noose right there, presumably, hanging around this ghost's neck. And uh, so... The hangman is looking at something from a different perspective. You can see the light in the picture and, and needing to take time to understand uh, where you're at. So we're kind of peering in the window at this ghost looking like he's going to make a decision. So really take time for introspection. And then the sky of this reading is a six of cups, which is, you know, like wanting things the way they were before they are the way they are now. So the six of cups is we're shooting for getting back to a place that was a happy place for us. And then the likely outcome for all of this is the ten of coins, which is excellent. I mean, that's like familiar wealth, happy family. Everything's going the right way. So if we if we can get past our hesitancy, uh, believe in our value, uh, get over whatever was so disappointing, really use our introspection, shoot for having things at the very least the way they were at a happy time, then things are going to come out exactly the way you want them to. So you can change this into a very good uh, result. So that's what we have today for those cards, whichever one or ones that you chose, this four-card oracle.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of that. Well, that was a fun four card oracle. I hope it worked out for you. If it didn't, let it rest. Maybe come back to it later and look at it, or, or it might apply to someone that you know and love and have some importance there. And if it doesn't uh, resonate with you, it just doesn't. You know, just, we'll just go on and see what happens tomorrow. I'm going to be doing another uh, oracle tomorrow, and this will be uh, an energy read. So we'll do a full Celtic Cross energy read tomorrow. So tune in then and see if that uh, works for you too, or if this one did. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now.